right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dina Buchanan, who is in Orlando, Florida. How are you doing, Dina? Great, John. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And uh, Dina started her real estate investment career in 2002 when she and her husband started LifeWorks, Inc., a residential company where she and her husband began the construction, rehabbing, acquisition, management, and disposition of single family homes. And over the years, you've spearheaded many entrepreneurial endeavors that have included both residential and commercial real estate companies, and as well as launching a very successful property management company. And what we want to talk about today is, Dina, what are business owners doing in this economy in order to not just survive, but to succeed and thrive? So um, what is the what is the first thing that you would say separates those people who can see opportunity even in the midst of like crazy chaos? <laughs> and it can be chaotic for a lot of business owners. Uh, first thing, take a deep breath and remember who you are um, and what you've started and and your dedication to your own business. Um, and then stop and think about, you know, what what do you need right now? What is the most important thing that you need right now? Um, a lot of times getting help from an outside source like a coach um, is really, really productive and instrumental at this time because, you know, we're kind of our own as business owners and I'm a business owner myself. So sometimes we're our own worst enemies, right? We, mm -hmm. you know, we, we try to self-diagnose and we try to figure it out and you know, we can only operate from the exact mindset that we have right now. And yeah. if we could operate out of where we are right now, we probably would be already there, right? So yeah. I believe that having some insight, you know, um, almost like a breakthrough uh, for mm -hmm. your business is really, really, I think, imperative at these times, right? Just yeah. getting some... And I, yeah, and I think it just... just just on, uh, underlining what you were just saying about the outside feedback, because I think that is incredibly important because let's face it. I mean, lots of times people um, think that they need to know everything. Like you've started your business, you, you know, you should know stuff or, or I think uh, as you could probably attest to as well, or you say, well, I'll ask my, I'll ask my partner spouse or my family members or, right. or yeah, that guy over there, he knows something. <laughs> the problem is that those people, come to it with their own biases and their own perspectives. Yeah. And, and you're far better off getting a completely independent one who's just focused on you and isn't bringing any baggage to the table, if you like. 100%, 100% agree. And you know, the power of that is the discovery that you get as a business owner, because it's, it's really about you. And where do you want to take your business? What level, you know, do you want to really achieve? I think that's important as well. Because a lot of people, as you just suggested, have these biases. And a lot of times, and I, and this is true with all people, people that know you, they know you when you were at level one. Well, now maybe as a business owner, you're at level four. So mm -hmm. they're still seeing you at level one. So they're going to give advice to maybe things that you don't even do anymore. That's not even your stuff anymore, right? Where you need somebody that can see you completely unbiased, ask questions to get to know where you are in the moment to really help mm -hmm. you break through and get to the next level. No, and uh, absolutely. Because like I said, I mean, we can be our own worst enemies in, in many ways. So what are, what are some of the, so getting, getting a mentor, getting some inside, outside yeah. perspective, that's always a good thing. What are, what are some other things you can do to, to maybe reorient your thinking and look at, you know, these challenging times as, as opportunities? You know, I think really getting back into looking at your business and saying, okay, what is it that I need right now? And I think the number one thing people are concerned with is, am I going to have enough clients, um, you know, mm -hmm. prospects to, uh, you know, sell my product to, to use that want to use my service? And the answer is a resounding yes. There are always going to be customers. It's about really being strategic, about getting in front of your target customers and doing things that help let you stand out versus your competition. 
What's going to mm. make you be a standout um, if you're a real estate agent compared to the other agents that are out there? Um, whatever your business is, what makes you better? What makes you different? And really start to separate yourself um, from others and your competition. I think that's a huge yeah. piece right now, too. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. And I think one of the things that people really want today is they really want some authenticity. They want to trust the people they work with. I think uh, somebody was saying recently um, that they used to say like, oh, people work with or buy from people who they like. And they think, and somebody suggested that that's changed a little. It's more, more people that they trust. And I, I think that's a really I, important thing. And especially now, given, you know, the fluctuations in the real estate market. I mean, you want to work with somebody who you trust is, has their finger on the pulse, knows exactly what's happening, is giving you good advice, is, is, is telling you maybe not even things you want to hear, but the truth. And, and that way you can make informed decisions. I think that's a huge piece. And that's why... When we can have somebody unbiased, that they're they're not attached to us, right? They're not they're not worried about I'm going to hurt his feelings or her feelings. Mm -hmm. They're just going to be completely transparent. And I think transparency as a business owner with who you're getting help from is huge. But you got to trust them, and your customers definitely want to trust you. So mm -hmm. when you are being a transparent business owner and your your offering is transparent, and they get to see who you are. And they get to see, wow, this is a person that actually not only do I like, I, I like them because they're real, uh, they're mm -hmm. honest, and they care. I think we grossly underestimate care uh, when we can care about our customers and, and what is their best interest. Um, you know, what do they want? When I work with clients now, I let them know, hey, listen, it's not about me and what I want. It's about me helping you get what you want and need. And that's mm -hmm. what is the most important. I care more about you. I, I've said this to a client. I said, I care about more about you than I do this relationship with you. So I have, I have nothing to lose. I'm always going to be very honest with you. And if that sends you away, well, then maybe we shouldn't work together, but it never sends anybody away. People love that because they go, wow, she's brave enough to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. And that's somebody that can really help me make a change. Yeah, no, especially in and especially in fluctuating markets, as as you would know better than I. But uh, I mean, when we go through a situation like this, and maybe maybe my house was technically worth X two months ago, uh -huh. and now it's worth Y, but I'm hung up on the X, right? Mm. I mean, that's a difficult convert. That's a di that's always for me. That's always a difficult conversation. Yeah realtors and sellers have to have is the reality of what your house yes maybe if you sold it two months ago you'd have got x but unfortunately now you're not going to get an x and if you hang on for x uh you know you may miss out yes you know i think the reality is again trusting who you're working mm -hmm. with because you know I and, I and i work with a lot of realtors as well as other business owners and one of the things i hear from realtors a lot is, you know, they hear through other people's advertisements about, I'll get you this, I'll do this mm -hmm. for you, I'll do that for you. Um, and if those things were real, they would be already there, right? So yeah. I think that it's it's more, I know it's more about um, having a real conversation and saying, hey, this is the reality and this is how fast things change. And you got to realize too, our customers today, particularly in real estate, they're bombarded. Oh my gosh. They're so bombarded with mm -hmm. news and data that they get from social media channels and whatever else they're listening to that it may all be overwhelming to them. And so mm -hmm. getting with them and getting clarity, I think as a business owner um, or whoever's representing you with your clients is really getting crystal clear on exactly what is the situation. And keep in mind their situation, your situation, everyone's situation is individual. The things that mm -hmm. maybe stop one business owner from succeeding, another business owner may not have that issue. They could each be going through something, right? That's keeping them mm -hmm. from getting what they want, but it could be different. So getting really down to what, what is it that's stopping you from mm -hmm. getting to the next level or the place you want to be or that goal? I think all yeah. those things really good conversations to have.
No, and, and I like it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I think what you touched on there is the is is the expertise bit, because that's what I want in whether it's a realtor or somebody else selling sure. me something is I want expertise and I want to know that, you know, and I think this and, and to your point, we are people always go, well, you know, you've got so much information now and you go, yeah, yeah I have tons of information. Ninety percent of it is meaningless to me. I don't understand it. I'm <laughs> bombarded like you said like you said yeah. in the real estate you have an ad said i'll buy your house for full price no questions asked right okay right. Well, it was that simple if it was really yeah. that simple exactly yeah, that's the way the business would work but to your point it's it's that expertise because that's when i trust you is when you're bringing me information either that i don't have myself or i mm -hmm. don't understand myself we get a lot uh, a lot of times the business owners will say they get from their customers. And sometimes I get business owners that ask me the same thing is, you know, where they might not so much ask, but they make a statement like, you know, I want to research more. And so my big thing is, where are you researching? Where are you getting your information mm -hmm. from? Because if you're for a real estate agent, if they're getting their information from the National Association of Realtors, well, that's a pretty trusted source. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if they're getting them from comps, like legit comps that came from that neighborhood in that zip code, right? That's a legitimate source. Somebody saying they're going to buy your house for X, Y, Z above this market value. Well, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, there's probably a lot of fine print in there. There's probably a lot of, you know, clauses in there that may say, all right, well, under these circumstances, right? The moon is mm -hmm. in this position, and the stars are in this position. Who knows, right? So it really comes down to trusted source and trusting who you're doing business with um, and really limiting. I, I actually think the information that is out there is a lot of times a could be misleading, not intentionally, but there's so much of it. You don't, like you said, if you're not the expert in that field, um, I, you know, I was hiring a contractor to put some flooring in my house. I have, that's not my area of expertise mm -hmm. at all. Right. So even if I did research about flooring, I might not know what I'm reading. I might not know right. what these numbers mean or if this is mm -hmm. a good person or not a good person, right? So you got yeah. that too. Yeah, and and I think, uh, I mean, that and obviously in real estate is is pretty prevalent right now. I mean, you probably de uh, deal with it or people who deal with it. You know, somebody comes and says, oh, look, my house on Zillow is worth five bazillion dollars. Um, <laughs> can, can you get me that asking price? And you go, mm, probably not. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm not an agent, but yes, I'm, mm -hmm. I've, I've done real estate as an investor. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've yeah. worked with a ton of agents and um, in, in my business now, as well as in my real estate business. And yeah, they deal with that all the time. They deal with somebody saying, hey, you know, um, I can, you know, they have an advertisement that says, you know, your house is worth uh, $925,000 and a comp is going to say different. And it could be mm -hmm. a comp from this week compared to like, they might say, well, yeah. you know, a month ago it was, and, and that's true a month ago it was, but that's how quickly things can change with what's going on. And just to, you know, the thing about change is that the only one thing that's constant is mm -hmm. change in business. Yeah. And so a, a good, a business owner that uh, any business that stands the test of time, they've got adaptability. And I think, um, I was reading a, an article about different, um, like your IQ, you know, yeah. your intelligence quotient, your your social quotient, your emotional quotient, and they added another one, and it's called your adaptability quotient. And mm. I think that's really prevalent for business owners um, because I, I myself am life coach certified. Um, you know, mental health counseling was my background. I always say in my previous life before we did investing, mm. um, but. It, those things really do matter. And adaptability, I was happy to see they put that in there because I think as a business coach, um, I do measure that with my clients. I do talk mm -hmm. to them and say, hey, you know, there is going to be some element of change here and, and being willing to make the necessary changes. I think that's what makes businesses stand the test of time is when they, yeah. they grow. I mean, if you look at a McDonald's menu from the 19... 50s or 60s, it's completely different than it is today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because they're listening to their customers and they're adapting to the changes they need to make. And that's probably why they're still in business.
Yeah, no, I think that's an extremely important point is the adaptability piece, because, I mean, clearly, as we've seen, the world changes rather rapidly these days. And, uh, you know, who knows what's around the corner, but you can be pretty sure there's something else that you're not expecting. And I right. think and I think that's the hardest, the hardest thing about adapting ability is like i always say to people is don't get married to projects don't get married to your strategies okay. don't get married to anything evaluate all the time and if it's working fine stick with it but if it's not but be ready to pivot and be ready to and here's the thing you know it's even the concept of the austrian school of economics like some cost yeah okay maybe you put a lot of time effort and money into something but if it's not the right thing right now you have to be prepared to walk away from it and pivot absolutely you know even in our own businesses, um, and we've seen a lot of this too um, because of COVID. Like, look how many businesses had to pivot to online. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at how many businesses had to. I mean, and they had to, they had to adapt. It was adapt or die, basically, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you if you couldn't find a way to make it happen, then you weren't going to be in business. So it's amazing. So I always use that as an example with business owners. Like, yes, you can adapt. Yes, you can. Um, I think a couple things that I would recommend is one, make sure you got an, a good unbiased outside opinion, you know, mm -hmm. through, you know, from somewhere and two systems, like put a system in place that allows for adaptability. It sounds counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but really a system, a business system should be uh, maximized to help that business grow and yes. help that business expand. So there has to be adaptability worked into a system. So there's got to be some flexibility in there and some flexibility with an owner. Um, the things you don't stray from are your, your core values, you know, mm -hmm. your care and concern for your customers, doing a good job, um, supplying a quality product or service um, and, and helping people when they're using your product or service and they're, you know, they need help, you know, customer mm -hmm. service, right? Those are the things that are the untouchables. Those are the ones that yeah. stand the test of time. Everything else is adaptable. Yeah. And I think today the the whole, that part of the, the customer experience and being available and being a, a resource to your, to your prospect or your customer, that is, I think that is probably the most critical part right now, because as I said, I think after the pandemic, so we, we crave communication we crave authenticity we all of those things but if i can't get in contact with you right or if i if if it's frustrating or difficult to to get in contact with you and have a conversation then i'm going to get really really frustrated and unfortunately a lot of companies tried this over and some of them are still trying this great uh, experiment of making a really 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 hard for you to ever talk with a human being and i don't know how that's supposed to make you feel better <laughs> but anyway um I think it's I think that that communication and that availability and accessibility is critical. I, I can't agree with you more. Um, it's I think that the more contact we can have, like with people having somebody mm -hmm. that could be on the other end, even if you start out where you're contacting somebody via email or phone or a text message, but knowing that a person can contact you back or mm -hmm. you can speak to a live person. Um, that's, that's a huge piece. I think that's why right now coaching and, and, uh, getting help right now is even more important because we are missing that human touch. Um, mm -hmm. I also speak, teach and train and do live events and live events just came back. Um, so it's really unbelievable what I'm seeing with live events because live events, um, you know, a year ago it was like, Oh, I don't think they're ever coming back because now we have, mm -hmm you know, Zoom and we've got podcasts yeah. and we've got all of that. And so it's really, really uh, amazing that I'm seeing all of these people have just been craving like that human touch. So I think that's part of what's going on, you know, that we really have to have that piece. And, and I think it's coming through with customer service. Yeah, no, I I agree. And I think it's, uh, and, and going back to what you said earlier about having a process, I mean, I think you have to have systems and a process and you have to look at it from their point of view. If I am, if I am trying to contact your company, if I have an issue, uh -huh. how is the experience for the other person? Not the experience for you, because let's face right. it, as I said, there's lots of companies who design fantastic experiences for themselves that suck for the customer, yeah. but, but you have to do it. You have to build it from the outside in. Right. 
You do. And I think the biggest piece that we can do for our customers, for our clients is let them know a, that we care and B mm -hmm. we will be there for them. And yeah. I think if we can do those things and build that kind of trust and communication, that's really what is going to take a business owner and separate them from a lot of other businesses. Um, even realtors, I've had realtors say to me, you know what? Um, we've got uh, a lot of new realtors that are coming in that are younger, that are used to just dealing with people on text and email, mm -hmm. and they don't have that face-to-face -face component. Whereas these seasoned professionals have that face-to-face -face component. And me personally, I like that. I, you know, I, yeah. I definitely appreciate the convenience of text and emails. And sometimes I fall prey to that as well, because it is great to give a quick answer. However, being able to be with somebody and talk and get your questions mm -hmm. really, you know, answered and feel like you're cared about is huge. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for you. It's not, it's not just making it convenient for the customer. It's a great opportunity for you because let's face it, if you're having a conversation, asking good questions, listening, clarifying, um, these are things that are difficult to do over text. So, uh, yeah. And how much miscommunication have you ever had over text? Let me, let me ask exactly. you that. <laughs> I, I was with a friend of mine and I was, and, and I was saying something and he's like, why are you mad at me? And I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm running through yeah. an airport. <laughs> I'm just trying to answer you. And it's so funny. And so think about that from a client perspective, though, if a client thought I was being short mm -hmm. and not caring about them, they would be like, well, gosh, I don't, I don't want her to represent me. I don't want her to coach yeah. me. I don't want her to, you know, sell my house. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, listen, Dina, this has been fantastic. All of Dina's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. So I am part of the leadership team with the high-end client program. And one of the things we do is we help business owners um, get in front of the clients that they really want to get in front of. Um, and we've got a product that specializes in doing that. Um, and so it's really, really amazing um, how you can change your business uh, within a probably 48 to hours to a couple of weeks where you can see a huge difference in marketing and how we address um, your marketing with our clients, with your clients. So um, one of the ways we do that is we offer a complimentary breakthrough session. So it'll information will be at the bottom of the screen. It'll be bookcallnow.com. Mm -hmm. yep. And you can get uh, on our calendars and have a complimentary breakthrough session with one of our business strategists. And we can help you get really super crystal clear on what's going on for you and your business. And that's totally complimentary. It's about a thousand dollar value. Um, and it's totally complimentary. It's about a 90 minute call. So set aside some time, uh, 90 minutes for that so that you have it because you'll want to drink up every minute with one of our strategists because they're really there to help you break through and get where you need to be. Um, so you can get your business to level up to the next level. Perfect. Uh, I would encourage everybody to check it out as as uh, Dina just said there it's a thousand dollar value free of charge hey this you know 90 minutes could be the difference between you succeeding and not yeah. uh, so I would encourage you to take advantage of it great offer um listen thanks again Dina thank you oh, all for watching so thank and you so much for having us of course and I will see you all again soon thank you bye